Another colligative property of solutions is freezing point compression, boiling point elevation. The colligative properties or properties that uh, depend upon the concentration of the solute without the identity of the solute. So that will include our boiling point elevation, freezing point depression, our vapor pressure, our osmotic pressure. The vapor pressure is the source of our boiling point elevation and freezing point depression. So as we put a non-volatile solute into our solvent, we can lower the vapor pressure. So the blue line is the original pure solvent. As we lower the vapor pressure, we automatically push up the boiling point to a higher level, and we bring down the freezing point to a lower level. Both the equations start off looking pretty much the same. The change of temperature, so the boiling point elevation equals IMKB. I is the Vanthoff factor, that's the number of particles produced as we dissolve something in solution. So when we have an electrolyte, such as our sodium phosphate, we're going to form cations and anions. In this case, three cations, one anion. Add that together, we get a Vanthoff factor of four. If we have a non electrolyte, the Vanthoff factor is one. It does not dissociate. So if we dissolve sugar in water as a non electrolyte, one mole of sugar will make one mole of solute particles in water. Whereas one mole of sodium phosphate will make four moles of solute particles in water. So the freezing point depression has the same form, IMKF. KBKF are for the solvent alone, and they are different from each other. Once we have our uh, freezing point depression, boiling point elevation, they're both positive numbers. What we do with it changes. So for the boiling point, we add it to the original boiling point to get the new boiling point of the solution. For a freezing point, we subtract it from the original freezing point to get the new freezing point of the solution. So let's do several problems here. So if we have a 0.125 molality sodium phosphate, um, we're asking two questions. What is its boiling point elevation? So that'll be the delta T. And what's the new boiling point? So that'll be our adjusted boiling point. So the sodium phosphate will give four ions, three sodiums plus one phosphate. So we have a ventral factor of four. So we put our values into the equation and solve for delta T. And we get a boiling point elevation of 0 0.26 degrees Celsius. Then to get the boiling point, we add this to the original boiling point. We know that for water, it's 100 Celsius. So we add that together and we get 100.26 degrees for the boiling point of this solution. The Vantoff factor, we assume complete ionization, but we don't always get complete ionization. So the observed or measured Vantoff factor can be less than our expected Vantoff factor. And this would be our maximum. We can't get more than this, but we can get less than this. So in the next problem, we're going to solve for a Vantoff factor. So we have a 0 0.091 molality calcium chloride solution. Its freezing point is a negative 0 0.440 degrees Celsius. Our Kf per water is 1.86 degrees per molality. We want to know what the Vantoff factor is. So <clears throat> For our freezing point, we subtract the delta T from the original. So we rearrange this to get what delta T is. That'll be our initial minus the uh, altered temperature. So in this case, zero minus the negative 0.44. So we have a positive 0.44 for our delta T. Our delta T should always be positive. We solve our equation for the Vantoff factor. So that's delta T over MKF. We put our numbers and we get a Vantoff factor of 2.60. So for calcium chloride, we would expect a Vantoff factor of three for complete ionization. And we get some ion pairing going on that can reduce the Vantoff factor. So in this case, it drops down to a 2.60. Let's do a couple more. Okay, so which is a higher boiling point 
2-malality sodium chloride or 2-malality sucrose? Well, they're both aqueous. Oops, I didn't write that down. Aqueous. So um, the delta T would determine the higher boiling point, and the IM factor is what will determine the high boiling point. So for sodium chloride, the Benetton factor is two, we move from one sodium, we move from one. So two times the 2.0 molality, we get an IM of 4.0. For sucrose, uh, our table sugar is a covalent compound, it will not ionize in solution. So the Benetton factor is one, so IM is two. So the larger uh, IM will give us a larger delta T, which will give us a higher boiling point. So the two molality sodium chloride has a higher boiling point. <clears throat> and the next problem, uh, this is what we'd be doing if we're trying to design a particular temperature for a solution, a particular freezing point. What mass of glycerin must be dissolved in 200 grams of water to give a freezing point of negative 1.5 degrees Celsius. And our KF is 1.86 uh, degrees C per molality. So again, we're going to just rearrange it to figure out that our delta T is a positive 1.5. We subtract that from the original zero, and that would give us our negative 1.5 there. So our delta T is a positive 1.5. And we're looking for mass, so we want to get our concentration molality. So we solve for molality, delta T over IKF. Put our numbers in, and we get a 0 0.0806 molality. Molality is moles per kilogram. So we're going to multiply by the kilograms of water. So we convert our 200 grams into 0.2 kilograms. Multiply molality by kilograms, and we get 0 0.161 moles of glycerin. We multiply by its molar mass, and we need 14.8 grams of glycerin in that 200 grams of water to give us a freezing point of a negative 1.5. And last problem here, colligative properties have traditionally been used to help identify the molecular weight, molar mass of compounds. So we find a solvent that will dissolve in, measure the uh, freezing point of the pure solvent, freezing point of the solution. And uh, we need uh, the mass of, this, of the solute that we're dissolving in. That's what we're going for the molar mass of. We're going to need the mass of the solution that we're dissolving in. So in this case, uh, 7.22 grams of a non electrolyte dissolved in benzene will give us delta T F of 8.7 degrees Celsius. For benzene, KF is 2.53. What's the molar mass here? So we're solving for our molality first. So we solve for that, do our delta T over IKF. The non electrolyte means that I is 1. And we get uh, 3.44 moles of the non electrolyte per kilograms of the benzene. So we convert our 75 grams of benzene to kilograms, 0 0.075 kilograms. Multiply the molality by the kilograms, and we get moles of our non electrolyte, 0.258 moles of the non electrolyte. We have mass, we have moles, we can calculate our molar mass, molecular weight, 7.22 grams divided by 0.258 moles gives us a molecular weight of 28.0 grams per mole. <clears throat>